What's good, YouTube? Chris from Team Innovation here, bringing out another discussion today. And today's discussion will be based on the old good old topic, Snatch Deal. Now, without further ado, let's begin. Start off by saying I was going to tackle this topic earlier in the week, but due to it being Christmas, the holiday season, and everyone just taking sure little birth from Yu-Gi-Oh, I had my mind focused on other things. So now I feel like it's time to get my opinion on this topic. For you guys that do not know, Patrick Hoban went on Zodiac stating that Snatch Deal is not going to be good when it comes to Dallas, pretty much. And then he made another article following up by stating his reasons behind why he said Snatch Deal is bad. And he gave a long list of reasons that goes into variables and situations and how it could be a dead card and not always optimal. And that's fine and dandy with his thinking, but... I'm going to make a statement by saying Snatch Deal is a staple. Yes, it is a staple in every single deck that should be played. Now, why I think Snatch Deal is a staple? Snatch Deal is a staple because, just like BLS, it can really just win games. Hence the name, Snatch Deal. The card equips itself to one of your opponent's monsters, and it can just attack the game. If you're playing meta... Every meta deck contributes something. You have BAs, which some variants do tech the high-level monsters, like the the Magic Thief Fiend, the Vanity Fiend. I mean, a lot of them don't do that anymore. But they tech those sometimes and side deck them. I can see since Snatch Deal being a off the list card, there'll be a lot of players that go back to maining that card, maining those cards to support the Snatch Deal. And then you have Cliff Offs, which all are. Level 5s, level 6s that require one tribute summon to get their effects. And then you have decks like. What are the other decks in the meta? Kind of tie. Nah. Because we got Cleaves, BAs, Shout Alls, who run tribute fodder as well. They have the Shout All Dragon. Nah, not Shout All Dragon. They have the one guy that's level 5 to draw suit. So the top three decks all run tribute summon monsters. So. The whole argument about Snatch Deal being bad is invalid right there for the, if you're playing Metal. And if you're playing Rogue, come on now. Every, in, in order to play Rogue right now, in my personal opinion, you have to OTK. So in Heroes, I'm going to Snatch Deal your monster, your best monster, spam my field with um, Dark Law, and then Mass Change and try to go off for game. And Madoche, same concept. I mean, Snatch Deal is a card that, while on paper to some people's minds, because I read Hoban's article and I understand where he was coming from. On um, paper, it seems like it's one of those things like, yeah, it's not that great. It could be MST. It could be avoided with Lance, even though it'll get equipped to the NFA. It's just one of those things that it doesn't seem amazing. But if you're not running Snatch Deal, I'm going to say you're stupid in my personal opinion because just you when you play the card, you're not going to just Snatch Deal any monster your opponent has on their field. You're going to save it for the right moment. Just like when you're playing any deck, like say for example, you're playing Burning Abyss and you have um, Black Lesser Soldier in your hand. You're not going to just, okay, I have a Light and Dark one, so I'm going to go Soldier and see what my opponent does. No, you're going to bait your opponent out, let them waste their resources, and then go for Soldier and then go for game. See, honestly, I think people who are saying Snatch Deal, honestly, is bad. It's just straight up and honestly, Hoban saying Snatch Deal was bad. I mean, just because he's a good player who has more credentials than I probably ever will. That doesn't mean that he's always going to be right. So, when you guys are listening to people, especially pros, hell, even me, take our advice with a grain of salt. Don't always just take the first thing you hear and just stick with it because that's not always going to be the case because six different situations occur, different variables. But I can tell you guys this, Snatch Deal is going to be running every deck. Just like how Ragaki is pretty much running every deck. I mean, a lot of pros don't run it, but pretty much, Outside of the pro, outside of the quote unquote pros, everyone runs Regeki. Reason being, it's just the one card out to your opponent's field. So why wouldn't you run Snatch Deal? If you're playing Metal, you're going to have Tribute Fodder. If you're just playing a regular deck, you can save it for the right time, take your opponent's best monster, and allow it to stall you out until you gain back resources. So, with all that being said, hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, with a big thumbs up, share support. As always, comment down in the comments section below what you guys thought about today's topic at hand. This was Chris from Team Innovation. 
And I'm signing out. Rate, comment, subscribe. And of course, I do this videos to help you guys become better players because that is my goal as a YouTuber to help everyone start topping their first regionals, YCSs, and locals. So once again, Christmas Team Innovation, signing out. Rate, comment, and subscribe. Have a good day, guys. Peace.